Nice. There we go. Booga, 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 booga. All right, that's two o'clock. Welcome, Internet land. We are building a computer today. And we are doing a pretty bare bones little setup here. Mainly going to be an office computer. It's going to be the first desktop that I've built in a couple of years now. Actually, most of the days I'm working on laptops and stuff like that, so this is going to be a nice change of pace. So the guts today will be a Core i3-8100, and yeah, it's an i3, but it's a quad-core i3, so that should be pretty darn uh, snappy indeed. I believe this has a 6 megabyte cache and a 3.6 uh, gigahertz aggregate CPU. So that's going to be uh, fairly zippy uh, for the money. I think this was, man, it was cheap. It was like 80 bucks or something. And for our hard drive, we are going to be uh, running this uh, burst solid state drive. This one is... I believe we went with a pretty pretty small size. I think it's only like 128. Uh, but it just needs to be big enough to put an operating system on. If they need more storage, then uh, we'll put in like a mechanical hard desk uh, as a storage unit. And for our motherboard today, it is a Asus Prime HG10M-E. Rolls right off the tongue. Oh, hello, Ziri. How are you doing? I see you there. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me company, even only for a little while. So we got those parts. It's going to be 8 gigs of DDR4 uh, RAM. So that's going to be able to handle at least oh, two Chrome tabs. And the uh, real... Uh, retailer where all this came from did a quick mount for me. So the CPU has been uh, safely and correctly mounted, as well as thermal pasted, as well as the installation of the RAM. The BIOS has been uh, flashed to make sure it's all up to date. 
Greetings, Creator Television. Thank you for joining me. So that's all good to go. So let's take a look at this fellow here. And as you can tell, we're looking at a pretty tiny motherboard. It should be Mini ITX, I believe, is uh, the size of this fellow. I don't know if I have my measuring tape handy on my work table here, or I would pull that out and confirm the size. But let's carry on. So this has uh, very low power requirements. I believe the power supply that I'll be unboxing uh, for this unit is a whopping 300 watts. So it's got one uh, expansion slot here. It's got another slot uh, for another DIMM of RAM. For I.O., we've still got some very antiquated PS2 ports. We have one VGA, one HDMI, uh, two USB 3, two USB 2, our Ethernet, and headphone, and or sorry, headphone and microphone uh, jacks. So this is uh, pretty bare bones in terms of uh, what, what we're going to get out of this fellow. So I suppose what I should do is uh, gut the box here. So we've got some SATA drive cables. We've got our punch out. Looks like that's already been thiefed. Oh, we have an M M2 uh, SATA drive spot. I just realized that from the little baggie that gives you this plastic piece, which is cute. We've got our manual, which we will need for some instructionals. I think we're good to go with that box. So how's everybody over in internet land? I do have the chat open on the screen there, so I can read it uh, as we go. And now I've got to deal with the box that the case came in. So I'm going to move all of our other packaging and non-essentials off to the side here. I need my box opening tool. My waffen stabbing. And I do apologize for the camera angles today. I'm not using my regular recording equipment because I don't have uh, a line to keep uh, constant power going to that camera. It's just using batteries and it chews through them pretty quick. So what I'll do is I will lay down our case box here. I will move our motherboard out of the way. So this is a also a budget case. It's an in-win, which I have never heard of, but that's not saying much. I haven't built uh, a desktop in quite some time, so I'm just going to pan the camera around so you can see the the basics, it's an EFS052, uh, not really a whole lot to write home about. So let's uh, open it up and get it out. At the very least, it seems well packaged. That's not very big at all. All right, out of the box. Yeah. Ah. There we go. Sorry that wasn't on camera. That would have been pretty difficult to do, I think. So we'll move our styrofoam pieces. Of 
find our way in. So, the front of our case doesn't look like much. It's just a basic grill. Two USB 3, two USB 2. It's even got punch outs for a small card reader or floppy drive. Two optical drive bays. Looks like there is a fan grill on the front here. And then, of course, over on the side, we have a vent as well as our uh, access port in. So. Let's lay it down and get to work. Looks like the power supply is top mounted. So that's pretty easy off. Got our little bag of screws and mounts. And the inside of our Super simple case, has a couple of quick swap drive bays, which is handy. We've got a single case fan there at the back, and our power supply cable is hanging out there. We can put that off to the side, the side being the floor for today. And there is our front I.O. That's our USB. I'm not sure where we're going with this. And then that is front audio, likely. And this is fan power. We'll see if we've got the PSU for that. And there's our mess. Just hanging out up there. So for the meantime, we are going to stuff that back up there. Hello, David. How are you doing on this Saturday afternoon? I hope that you are well. Please bear with me as we figure out some camera angles here because how to uh, film the inside of this case could be uh, quite challenging indeed. For those of you that are going to be wondering, the camera that's being used right now is actually the Surface Book 2's front-facing camera. And it's actually doing not too bad of a job. So this is the guts of our case. There is our woefully tiny power supply. A whole... what does that say? Yikes, that's not very much. <laughs> so, very small form factor. We'll put in our screw mounts, put in our motherboard, and then do the boring part of reading the manual to make sure that everything is getting plugged into the right hole. So... Bear with me a moment, silver plate. Just cut into our little baggie and get some mounting screws. And what I will do is get my little plastic dishes to dump all of our screws into. So first things first, let's take our motherboard and do a quick fit to see what holes we actually uh, will need uh, mounts to. Awesome. So it actually looks like we're going to be able to screw uh, right to the case without the risers, which will be handy. So we'll take our 
faceplate. Open that up. I actually watched a friend of mine one time install one of these backwards, upside down, and the wrong way. We will henceforth refer to him as Captain Special. And I do apologize that the audio for this moment is probably not going to be super attractive as it's metal squishing against metal. There we go. Hello, Cher. How are you doing? Figure if everyone gets a hi, someone will eventually say hi back. <laughs> so let's drop in that motherboard and then we'll be able to stand this fellow up. And then there will be actual things to watch. And I do appreciate your patience. It's not uh, always the most incredibly stimulating thing to see. Ah, so the specs of the computer, David. We've got a, let me grab it for you, a Core i3, 8100. And we are going to be putting in 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM so we can use three tabs in Google Chrome. And it's all going on a Asus Prime H310ME, which is a pretty bare bones little motherboard. And we're throwing in a 120 gig solid state drive on top of it. And this is all being driven by the enormous 300 watt power supply included with this case. I know, it's just so much wattage, you just don't know what to do with it all. <laughs> I used to watch the back of my computer as a kid, dust blowing into my eyes and lungs. Well, hopefully that didn't cause you any health issues, but uh, yeah, there's something cathartic about trying to clean one of these machines. Oops, we just had a bit of a slip. All right, first screw is going in. And everything looks like it's lining up nicely out here, which is good. I do, I do miss my like really, really, really old computers. Uh, my 486 especially, I miss that. And I, I see all these people, especially on uh, Twitter and YouTube, that are like rebuilding these machines. They're finding them and they're installing antiquated OSs on them, and they're playing the games, quote unquote, the way that they should be played. And you know. I have to admit that I find that stuff pretty interesting, the restoration of that really old tech. Yeah, this thing uh, will not need that many screws. I think I'm on my last, last one for ITX. And then we can uh, play my favorite game, which is the manual comparison game to find out where, uh, what screw, or pardon me, what plugs go where. All right. So, pardon me while I make an adjustment uh, for your viewing pleasure.
There we go. Hmm, we need one more thing. I'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. All right. <laughs> Yeah, childhoods are funny things. There we go. Oh, too high. There. Need to shed some light on the situation there. Okay. We don't even have the H310MBs in the Czech Republic yet. Ah, so is it is this a newer board? I'm not sure. Let's flip through the book of words. Uh, let's see. Com USB blah de, blah de, blah front panel eight. System connectors. Yes, thank you very much. That's what I want. Activity light. You know that's great. Don't need that. Installing CPU. Nope. RAM. Nope. 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 Hmm. Sometimes they actually give you a diagram, but I guess uh, no, no such luck today. Alrighty. So let's start the installation process. That goes in there very gently. And this is USB, and I'm going to get down there, check out those pins. Let's check the diagram again, see which one is HD audio. Um, USB front panel. AFP. There we go. Front panel audio connector it is 14, so that's at the very end. So that's this fellow here. Wow, they do not give you a whole lot of cable to plug that in. So the correct orientation is like that. That's very firm. And USB. Looks like we've got the choice of two buses. And I will choose, let's see what orientation is going to be the least amount of cable twisting here. This one. So that's that. And now we get to play this game. So power switch, hard disk light, reset switch, and power LED, which I'm not percent sure I see on the side of the case. My goodness, that is tiny, tiny writing. So it looks like it's hard disk, LED, Would have been nice for them to put this up in the manual. I have other manuals that actually very clearly spell this out. <laughs> the only thing in the manual it says, this connector supports several chassis mounted functions. Dot, dot, dot. So the 
usefulness of that has pretty much run out. Does it give positive and negative indicators? Maybe. Excuse me for a moment. I need to tilt this to uh, see if I can actually see any plus or minuses or positive and negatives. Oh, there they are. Like that's not microscopic. Huh. So it looks like the orientation is actually running slightly differently than I'd expect. So power LED. Those two. Hard disk drive LED is those two. Hmm, that's weird, because the orientation shouldn't be like that. And this is why you keep your ThinkPad handy for situations like this, because you don't trust what is printed on the motherboard. So, Asus Prime H310M. Dash E case connection. Let's see if we can get any better information. Let's see what we have here. A lot of this is troubleshooting stuff. That's not what I want. Let's see if the quick start guide says anything. Okay, lists it in step six. Install system panel connectors. And it still doesn't show you the orientation of those connectors. Oh, it might on this really tiny picture. Mm, nope, I lied. <laughs> Let's try the online manual. The 
because for whatever reason, it's very poorly documented what the orientation of these pins go. I really don't want to do the whole guess and check thing, especially when it's not my parts. So they give you the pin readout for the digital audio connector, but they don't give you the pin readout for the front panel. What a nuisance. Gives you step-by-step -step pictures how to do everything else except that. Okay. Yep, oh, got it. About time. Finally found it. Ironically enough, for another board, but it looks like it's gonna match. So let's undo everything that we did before and get this show on the road. So power LED, positive and negative. Goes there. Power button or power switch goes there. HD LED goes there. And reset power. Ah, that's why it's so weird. It changes orientation. That goes like that. And this goes like that. All right. Thank you, ThinkPad. You're welcome. All right. So now we can give you a much better view again. If you're still here, thank you for your patience. So let's start uh, plugging in a few things here. Come on. Blah. Separating out this spider nest. We've got motherboard power. Check. That's for a GPU that we don't have. So we're going to stuff you away for now. You can go hide. Are you four pin? No, you're six pin. You're definitely, you're definitely GPU. And that's some SATA. That's some more SATA. So we shall give some power. Gotta make sure we get the orientation of that right. For ATX. There we 
go. Let's try the other one. There we go. That's ATX. CPU fan is where it should be. Do I even have a second fan controller on this board? to that question may in actual fact be no. So I might have a fan that I can't drive, but at the same time it really shouldn't need it. CPU fan, blah blah blah. Yeah, doesn't look like there is one. So we're just gonna carry on. Hello, this is not a laptop. <laughs> if it is, it would have been pretty big. I'm just doing a stream of a construction of a machine, that's all. Now, whether or not we're gonna get an optical drive in this beast, I'm not sure. So let's attempt some cable management since most of this is not going to be in use. Let's tidy that up. Put that there for now. Elastics out of the way. Turn our attention toward our solid state drive install. There we go. First, it's a hundred and twenty gig. Just enough to hold an operating system. Well, plenty to hold an operating system, really. Now, our motherboard came with some SATA cables that are hiding right over here. There we go. They gave us two, which is handy. One with an L shape and one without an L shape. So these are one of those pinch to removes. And it looks like we will be mounting this fellow on the bottom like this and sliding it back into these rather brightly colored bays. So let us go ahead and mount this, like physically mount it. I'm very curious to know how quick this is going to be once we throw the operating system on it, which may not be until later uh, this evening. So that will probably not be streamed because, let's face it, uh, installing an OS is not, uh, not that fun to watch. <laughs> I'm making a dangerous assumption here that anything that you're seeing right now is even remotely entertaining. All right, so. There we 
go. And let's use this one for our data, which is good because that uh, just fits flush against there. And we will plug in here like so. And we will thread our power like so. Let's see, that rack on the side is so much nicer than on my case. I have a huge box with three metal boxes screwed inside and then you have to remove every part to get it out. Yes, that is like my Amtec 900 case that my main desktop is sitting in. In fact, it sounds like that's very similar to what you have. And it's a pain, <laughs> but I only open that part of the computer maybe every 10 years which is a bit neglectful on my part, I have to add. But uh, I've built, I built, well, I shouldn't say I built, I'm more like a Frankenstein, another computer recently that had drive bays like this, but they were like fat. And I was thinking, wow, that's, uh, that's actually pretty forward thinking stuff. I thought that was quite nice. All right, so we've got power, the optical drive, like I said, we may or may not put in later. It's not gonna be uh, mission essential here. We've got our hard disk in place. And it looks like everything else is copacetic. So let's just get rid of some of this stuff. We're not going to need that anymore. I'm going to put these boxes inside of that box. And that box inside of this box. It's kind of sad. They didn't even bother to include like an Asus sticker or anything like that. I wonder if there's an Intel sticker. Yeah, we do have an i3 Intel sticker. That's pretty cool. There, put that on the front. Make it look all fancy. That's not the right orientation. Okay, so we got those boxes out of the way. So I think at this point we need to do a power and display test. It's kind of an interesting idea for a latch here. Like, what's the most complicated and most spring-inducive way that we can create a case access latch? Well, Hawkins, I think if we uh, use at least two springs in a 45 degree angle, which will clearly deplete the you know, lifespan of the springs and the replacements, that uh, that would be most excellent. Now, do I have to squeeze this to get it back on? Oh, you're going to be one of those cases, are you? All right, let's lay you down.
There we go. All right. So bear with me for one more moment. I've got some stuff to uh, set up. Oh, I got a joke here. Three NoSQL database admins walk into a NoSQL bar. Later they walk out because there were no tables. <laughs> okay, I actually get that. I've done a fair bit of web design in my time and MySQL databases and tables are one of those mysteries that I use them all the time, but did I fully, fully understand and appreciate them? Not even close. That was for my own sanity. All right, so I just need to disappear for a quick moment to get a monitor and a keyboard to do a test to make sure that everything is actually working the way it's supposed to. So, BRB. Oh, you actually have that case. Oh, my condolences. But I've had that case for over 10 years now. Like it's, uh, it's a tank. I've actually shipped that thing across the country and back twice. So is it big, heavy? Super claustrophobic to work in. Oh, yes. Um, but at the same time, I love it. All right. There's my monitor cable here. Bzz. Real... Realistically, I really should put the paneling back on my uh, on my case. I just haven't bothered to get around to it because of uh, that recent hard drive upgrade. You know how it is. You upgrade, upgrade your computer and you're like, oh, I'll put the panels back on later. And then a month later, someone comes into your office. Why is your panels on the floor? I'm like, uh, I upgraded my hard drive. What, today? No, four months ago. Dude, put your panels back on. It's like, okay. Or maybe that's just me. Maybe that doesn't happen to any of you. All right. <laughs> Feels like some sort of obscure military spec strong box. In a way, like if you needed to use a computer for home defense, that would be it. All righty. So we're just putting in our monitor into place here. 
those all away. Over there. interesting. Uh, the monitor that I've got here is actually a pickup from a wholesaler, but they had uh, brand spanking new power and VGA cables still in the packaging. Monitor certainly isn't that new. Like it's in pretty good shape, but uh, like I still have the plastic caps coming off of uh, the cord. Alright, VGA in, and VGA in. Let's try and orient this so there's something, something good to watch. I am going to temporarily turn off my not studio lighting. Do a bit of a turn here. And let's install. That I've got my operating system USB. Now, let's see. Let's see, let's see. We'll stick that in the front. Let's see if we get power. Always helps if the power supply is turned on. Whoa, that's quiet. <laughs> Okay, and it looks like we got mouse support out of the gate, which is good, and it went straight to BIOS. And let's see, might as well check the specs while we're here. So eight gigs of RAM, idle temperature of 24 degrees, which is about two degrees above room temperature. Oh, Hector's got another joke. Uh, I don't see women as objects. I consider them to be a class of them. Oh, man. I get it. All right, David, have yourself a good evening. Appreciate you stopping by. So our core voltage is a whopping 1.072 volts. And CPU fan is running it says that it should be detecting a case fan but i did not see a place to plug that onto the main board so i'm gonna have to uh, revisit that manual very quickly just to make sure that i didn't miss a connection point because i did not see one All right, so they're labeled as two. Ah, oh, okay, I see it. I see it, I see it. All right, so I'm gonna turn this off and fix that right away.
So let's open that up. And according to the book of words, it's hanging out right there, man. Oh. There we go. So just in case you were wondering, the CPU fan in question was right there. So when do you think the GPU prices and RAM prices will go down? Man, I don't know. I was at the store the other day and I was looking at like mid-tier graphics cards in uh, Canadian dollars being like eight and nine hundred bucks. And like that's dumb. Um, RAM, I'm not so sure about. Like it's it's all cryptocurrency and GPU mining. We might have to deal with those prices until we can find a cheaper supplier. But yeah, I remember RAM. It was like the cheap, no brainer upgrade. But now it's like I don't know. All right, there we go. Both case fans are humming along rather nicely. I assume that we're going to boot right to BIOS again, and we do. So the CPU fan is churning at about 1,000 RPM, and the case fan's humming along at 650. And it looks like you can uh, control uh, the fan speed, which is nice. I was thinking of upgrading since I only have six gigs and I saw the price shot up like crazy. Yeah, when I built my last system in 2012, I put in 16 gigs and I'm very glad I did it then because, oh my goodness, I wouldn't want to do it now. All right, so it does detect the flash drive, which means those front USB ports have been wired correctly and it doesn't notice any other things in the boot menu. So... I wonder if there's like a first on system. Uh, date and time is wrong. And there we go. Okay. The drive is flashing. Yeah, that's the other trouble with RAM, of course, is that you've got different different specs too. Let's see.
Hmm. That's odd. Why aren't you letting me boot? I'm not used to seeing BIOS as this clean and beautiful. Okay, so it does see the SSD, which is good. Hmm. Let's try this again. That's the darndest thing. Doesn't want to seem to boot from that drive. And that's going to hold me up. But that's okay, because at this point, it's just doing uh, an OS install. Everything else is good to go. All the components are there. So I think at this point, because there won't be a whole lot to watch, because I'm going to have to re reformat that drive or that thumb drive to try and get it to uh, boot that I am probably going to uh, say a good afternoon uh, to all of you in the chat and I do appreciate you hanging out uh, it's been fun and if uh, there is an opportunity to do this again I think I certainly will it's certainly not something I can schedule around because I never know when I'm going to even have uh, parts or an assignment or a task or something like that uh, to do this. So anyway, I really want to thank you for coming by and uh, be on the lookout over the next few days. There should be uh, at least one more video coming in the next two days and then I've got to get back to um, planning and filming. I, I do have a gaming uh, benchmark-ish video for the Surface Book 2 as well as a, a day in the life of uh, videos coming up. Um, there are a few other smaller ones like uh, the Cortana messaging assistant that's built into Windows 10. I did test that out briefly. So uh, content like that is certainly coming. So be on the lookout for that, and yeah, I think I will say a good afternoon or a good evening uh, to you all. And again, I really want to thank you for uh, joining me through this process, and I'll let you know how this goes.